Yeah, I don't think he blinks. I think that's one of the main things about him. Um, you know, obviously he's got all the physical tools. Um, he has the intangibles. Um, he, but the thing about him is, is he put the work. He puts the work ethic. Like he puts the work in, and you know, tremendous work ethic. And you know, it. You talk to him after the game. Got a little rolled up. You ask him if he's okay. He, he says he's fine. You know, and then he, you kind of monitor him, see what happens, and he's, you know, he he approaches the game like a pro. And he put a lot of extra time into just treatment and just making sure that he's on the same page in terms of uh, mentally and, and physically. And uh, I think that's just what makes him a little bit different than everybody else. Dana mentioned um, they do some things schematically um, similar to what uh, Tony does. Um, and they get a lot of TFLs. Is that TFLs, is that high on your list of concerns, staying on schedule with them because they do create a lot of negative yardage plays? Yeah, I, I think that it, it changes how you call the game too. And I think that's what happened last week uh, with the Kansas game. You know, we kept getting hit for negative plays that kind of tweaked my play calling at times where, you know, you're going for more high efficient, you know, um, pass plays at times when you're behind the chains and and because your run game wasn't popping the way you wanted it to in that first half but these guys are very multiple with what they do a little bit different than what gibby does but they they cause confusion and what they do is everything looks the same before every single snap and they're either playing man or dropping eight or uh they're they're zero pressure in you they're doing all sorts of things you know and that's where it's a big week on being disciplined and making sure we're going through the progressions and making sure that we're id to the right guys because they there's potentially there's problems uh if we don't you know if we lose that lack of focus each play i don't know schematically how similar they are to kansas but it looked like kansas chose to use a robber take away some of your rpos the, the quick stuff the slants and stuff do you anticipate that seeing that going forward is kind of a template to, to counteract what you're doing a little bit? Yeah, yeah, I think that's a lot of teams are starting to do that too. Um, what they did, they did do a, a couple things that are different. Um, what they came out that they had not shown in terms of how they ran their stacked front with a with a Mike backer that was about seven yards behind. You know, the, the it was kind of three levels. It was like a diamond three, two, one, all the way. Uh, uh, in the box, which you know Iowa State runs that, so you know we're 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 getting good reps at it. Is the way I look at it, and uh, you know the, the teams. Uh, the way I talk to the offenses is teams are going to keep things multiple. They're going to try to change you up, to change it up on you. They're going to try to keep you on your toes and get you off balanced. And we've got to be able to uh, react and and identify what they're trying to do and and make sure that we go attack it. And uh, I think uh, you know we met as a complete unit. And watch the entire game, um, and I, I thought there was a lot of good dialogue, and I think uh, we're just continuing to keep getting on the same page. Joe Brown available for this week? Should be, as far as I know. Yeah. What does that mean to your front as far as having him back? It just adds more depth, and and you can start practicing these guys more in certain positions. You know, when you when you get into the whole injury with Joe being being out. Now you got to take like Jacob Butchagrosi and have him play some guard and get center reps where you're stealing reps at, at center for him. So now you're starting to gain more depth and we can we can work more bodies and, and let them get good at their craft for that week. You know, and we've always kind of been opposed of having these guys work multiple positions throughout the course of the week, but and that's what we were forced to do the past couple of weeks. Because these guys are a little different. You're identifying points the same, or is Will looking for the same things he would as opposed to Kansas or Texas Tech? Or is he looking for different things? Very similar. Different? You know, it, it's it, there are three down teams, so there's going to be things that trigger what we're looking for. Uh, the team, you know, they're different than what you do versus a four down team, but there's a realm of what you can do out of a three down front, and you know, there's things that everybody's looking for, and. Uh, you know, as coaches, we find the things that we identify that could possibly hurt us and make sure that they're aware that if we get this certain look, then this is what we need to do. With TJ Simmons kind of being the, the main guy last week, just how comfortable are you feeling right now that any of those guys or, or maybe more can be your, your main target in any given game? Yeah, I think, you know, it's 
relieving for me, but I think it's really good for Will. I think you see Will having the comfort to be able to distribute the ball like he is right now. Um, God, I don't know how many guys are touching the ball a game, but it's a good amount. And that's kind of what you want to get to, where when you're looking at us from a, uh, from a scouting report, you know, there's a lot of people you know, across the board getting touches. So that, that's going to, I think, going to help us in the long run, where we're not showing just tendencies, just leaning on one receiver the entire time. But I am pleased with where TJ is. Where's Marcus Sims and his progression of just overall where you want him to be? Yeah, Marcus, he keeps getting better every day. You know, um, main thing with me right now and him is making sure that he's running as fast as he can, like where we're keeping him fresh, because uh, this is the time where we're starting to hit a wall a little bit. Um, everybody does. You know, halfway through the season, um, I think the bye week can't come at a good time. You know, it, where uh, you keep uh, keep him fresh because I think he has a speed that um, scares a lot of defenses, and that's what we need to continue to play with is have that threat where he can take it over the top anytime. Your, your rotation at wide receiver compared to last year allow those guys to stay hopefully fresher in the second half of the year compared to last year. Yeah, I and mean, I think uh, Coach Carrier does a really good job at monitoring that. You know, we ran into some issues with Tevin not finishing the game where. You know, you saw Dom come in at the slot position, and he didn't blink, and he he executed the plays cleanly, which is tough, you know, because he hadn't repped it ever, you know. But Coach Carrier does a good job at teaching them the whole scheme, making sure these guys have an understanding of what they're trying to do, and and he has a good feel for looking at them and understanding when and what time we need to give them a breather. And it's hard to do, especially when you're running 80 plays, especially when it's 80 degrees. Um, you know, it's just every, uh, you know, the climate changes a lot with us right now because I think, you know, you're going to practice in 80-degree weather here and it's going to be 40 degrees when you kick off versus Iowa State. So um, Carrier just has a good feel of where they're at and, you know, he, he handles all those substitutions and does a good job. Jake, I know, I know every coach would like to have Earl Campbell at running back and Jerry Rice at wide receiver. Yeah, well, what, what are the benefits of having three, three running backs and, you know, five, six receivers, seven receivers that you can throw to. I mean, as far as compared to it, how do you make those guys? It make goes them? back to the depth issues. I thought that's where we hit a wall last year is when you got to really this point in the season and we didn't have very great backups at that time that we trusted or will trust it. And we ended up running those guys kind of ragged in a way where they, they weren't as explosive as they need to be. And when you have a lot of different backs that you're confident in, a lot of different receivers, that's naturally just going to, you know, play out throughout the course of the season because, you know, you got Sinkfield coming back, you got all, you know, it's, you're, it's a long season and the attrition of it, you need all these guys to play. And uh, I, that's why I like having a lot of different options because as a play caller, you don't change what your thought process is because you have confidence in whoever you're putting out there. Where last year, I only had certain plays that I can run at certain times because these were the guys that practiced it and these are the guys that could do it. So that, that's always a good thing to have multiple players. Who you running back is, does that change your offense at all? Or? No, not really. They have just short yardage situations. You're going to get different guys in, different personnel. Is there a window on St. Field right now as far as the security? It's just, well, it's day by day, but he's getting close. I haven't seen too many games at a will like we did Saturday. What's his response been in a couple of days since then? You know, he takes a lot of ownership in it. You know, and I, I said to the message to the team that, you know, Sunday night that it's, there's no finger pointing in this room. We're all in this together. Everybody needs to improve their game. And that's why we watched it together, you know, because Will is going to take the ownership of it because he's the quarterback and rightf rightfully so. And, uh, you know, he just looks at me. I think he's eager to get back out there um, and play and kind of redeem himself a little bit. And he he understands that he feels like he needs to play, play better. Um, you know, the the three picks, it was kind of bizarre. I, you know, I hadn't seen that before, you know, where there's a possibility of three pick sixes. But, you know, it happens. you got to move on, and he's taking the ownership of it, and I think he's ready to have a good week of practice. Along the lines of what Bob was talking about with the running backs, what would having a a long touchdown run do for what you're trying to accomplish offensively? 
to, to, to balance out maybe what you're doing in the passing game and having that threat from the running game? Letty, Letty almost had one. Yeah, we're getting there. We're getting close. You know, I think that would be big, you know, just to close a drive off with a long touchdown run. Um, but teams, the way teams play the Big 12 is they're, they're going to rush three and they're going to drop eight and they're going to keep everything in front. You know, this is a team that is going to give you a good box to run the ball into, but they're really disruptive up front and they're trying to spill the ball to the perimeter and allow all these linebackers and safeties rally to the ball and keep everything in front. You know, you look at the explosive run tape on these guys, not very many people hit big runs on them, you know, unless it's just something uncharacteristic that happens. But they're very sound on what they do. Um, yeah, you would love to have a long touchdown run, but I, I'll take those, you know, 10 plus runs any single time. Do you feel defenses are respecting your run game? I think they have to. They do. I, especially how these guys are hitting. We had, I don't know how many it was, but we probably had around 15 plays over 10 yards of rushing, uh, which is, is good, you know. I like get it, it was it was a good number. I've, I don't know exactly what it was, but you know these guys were getting chunk yardage 